So we're smack bang right in the middle of the Asian swing, and we've got some big points on the line this week with Shanghai just starting. We've also got Beijing happening right now for the WTA. A lot of points up for grabs. Not too many big tournaments left for the year. Let's go have a look at who won last week's events. So as I mentioned, there is still some events going on at the moment. These are the results from last week. The Pan Pacific Open, we had Kudamatova taking out Pagula 7-5-6-1 to lift her second trophy of her career. In the Ningbo Open, we had Jabur beating Schneider in the final of a 250 event. And Jabur is trying to qualify for the WTA final. So that was a huge boost for her. On the men's side, we have the China open with Yannick Sinner beating Daniel Medvedev 7-6-7-6 in a very impressive performance and he puts himself right in that ATP finals race and over in Astana we had a 250 event on the indoor courts with Manorino taking out quarter in a close three set of 4-6-6-3-6-2 to lift his second trophy of the year. So some big results there. A lot of points up for grabs. And of course, we've got 1,000 events going on at the moment, which are going to be worth a lot more points when we do the ranking show next time. Having a look at the players that went up in the rankings this week, Kudamatova goes up three spots to number 16 in the world after winning that 500 trophy. Manorino, he goes up 11 spots to 23 in the world after lifting the Astana trophy. And Schneider, she goes to a career-high 63 in the world, 22 spots higher than last week after making the final of that 250 event. So some big points there and some big changes for those players outside the top 10. Players that went down in the rankings, Shapovalov. He dropped down seven spots to number 37 in the world. Nishioka, he goes down 10 spots to number 48 in the world. And Sharif goes down 16 spots to number 50 in the world after all losing points from this time last year. And in particular, Shapovalov, we haven't seen him for a long time. He's been battling injury for a long time this year. His ranking continues to drop. Not sure if we're going to see him at all until maybe the start of next year. Because he's just been injured and pulling out of tournaments all over the place. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings now. And no changes, just changes to the points with Sabalenka still on top. Sviontek still at number two with Goff at number three. Bagula close behind though at number four with Rabakina. Not too far behind that at number five. So there is a battle for that number three spot between those three ladies. Zachary stays at number six with Jabur at number seven. Vondrusova at eight. Mukova at nine. And Garcia rounds out the top ten for this week. Over to the race of the finals. And Sabalenka still on top with Fiontech at number two. Goff at number three. Rabakina at number four. Those four players have already qualified. And now Pagula has also qualified, adding a lot of points from last week's tournament over in Tokyo. So she is officially qualified. Only three spots up for grabs in the remaining weeks of the season. Von Drusova still at number six with Mukover at number seven. Jabur at eight. Zachary at nine. And Keys rounds out the top ten. But as I speak now, Zachary is the only player that's not qualified out of those five players that's still alive in Beijing. So there's a big chance that Zachary could put herself in that top eight by the end of Beijing and in the next time we do the ranking show. Over to the men's rankings now and no change at the top. Novak Djokovic still at number one despite losing points from not playing the Astana Open this year. Still well ahead of Alcaraz at number two. Medvedev stays at three. But Yannick Sinner, he goes up to a career high number four in the world after winning that 500 trophy last week in Beijing. Beating Medvedev in the final just adds that little bit extra. He also beat Alcaraz as well. So he beat the two guys ahead of him, pushing Runa, Pass, and Rublev down to five, six, and seven. And they're all playing next week in Shanghai. So it should be interesting to see if we get another change after that week. Fritz comes in at number eight with Rude at number nine. And Zverev rounds out the top 10 for this week. But like I said, Shanghai coming up next week. Djokovic is the only one that's not playing in Shanghai out of that list. So some really big chances. And of course, a thousand points up for grabs. We could see some changes again, even more changes again to the rankings this time next week. Over to the finals race now. And Djokovic still at the top with Alcaraz coming in at number two. Medvedev at three. Three. They're the only three players qualified. Yannick Sinner is so close. He's only got to win one or two matches in Shanghai to qualify for the finals as well. Rublev comes in at five with Sissipas at six. Zverev at seven. Runa at eight. Fritz at nine. And Rude rounds out the top ten. But like I said, next week, Shanghai, a thousand points up for grabs. Sinner's pretty much qualified, so there's only really four spots left. With about six weeks left of the season, a really big opportunity in Shanghai for some players to really get towards that cutoff point and qualify for the ATP Finals. So there it is. They are the rankings, and it's a little bit weird because we're doing a midweek ranking show because Beijing finished midway through the week, and Shanghai starts, and it's a little bit of a mess, but we'll get through it. Next week, there won't be a ranking show on Monday. It'll be the following week after the Shanghai Masters just to get things wrapped up properly. Uh, next week, there is a WTA 500 event as well after Beijing. So we'll keep an eye on that as well with the re results and the rankings and all that stuff. But let me know down in the comments below. What has been the most shocking part of the rankings this week? Are you surprised that Sinner is number four in the world? Do you think he is the fourth best player this year? It's hard to deny that he's not. He's won a 1,000 event. He's beaten the guys ahead of him. 
Uh, well, at least he's beaten Elkrest twice. He's beaten Mebedev once now. I mean, is he is he better than Rublev and Sitsipas this year? Probably. He probably is. So he's at number four, and he's up to number four by like a thousand points. So it's not even close between him and number five. But let me know down the comments below what's been the most shocking part of the rankings this week, and who is going to qualify for the WTA Finals.